This is Who Say Q&A. I'm Caitlin Becker with all the questions. And here with the answers today is the amazing hungry girl who is better known as Lisa Lillian. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks I for having me. I'm so excited to have you here. What I think Hungry Girl does really well is, in a sense, it's kind of like intuitive eating. And common sense it, is what it's all about. You're exactly right. And because I was the person, I'm like a food gossip. I would stand next to you at the supermarket and see what, I'm very nosy. I'd like look at what, what's in your cart and then be like, hey, I see you have this in your cart, but this actually tastes better. Or like I was the one people would call and say, how did you make that iced coffee drink I had in your house? And it is all about common sense. And also I'm a bit of a mad scientist. And so that really is, is what drove me. I mean, I really wanted to share the information that I had. I mean, a story that really I remember, and it was one of the things that sort of pushed me to create Hungry Girl, was when I was eating these pastries from a local pastry shop, and I didn't believe the calorie counts. I thought they were not accurate. And so I found some lab an hour and a half away, drove these pastries to a lab, spent about $600 of my own money to, to test them, and found that they had twice as many calories. And I thought, you know what, I'm crazy. And people would really benefit from having a crazy best friend who could give them the information they want, and they, I would do all the hard work. Mad scientist is such an appropriate term for what it is that you do because the swaps, I think, are such a tentpole of the brand. How did you come up with the idea of these swaps, and how long does it take to get the right balance to have it taste as close as possible to the real thing? Well, I mean, a lot of the swaps were created out of pure desperation, for, for lack of, I mean, I'm just being really honest. I remember one day, it was like a Sunday, and I was bored, and I think like my husband, who's a TV writer, had all the writers over, and I was just like, I want onion rings. How the heck am I gonna eat and make onion rings on a Sunday that are not gonna like make me gain a thousand pounds? So I found like Fiber One breakfast cereal in, the, in my cupboard and put it in a blender. And so that worked as a coating that was really healthy. So it is really about being a mad scientist in the kitchen and I think of myself I don't know if this sounds braggy but I think I have really good taste buds and I know what people are gonna like as someone who's tasted many of those swap recipes you have a good palate you are a self-proclaimed foodologist what does that mean it's just a word I made up because I was like <laughs> that sounds cute a foodologist I like food I know everything about food I study food when it's on my plate when it's in my face well like, I love it I, I read labels it's like I'm just a it's just a word Truly, and, and I had never heard it before, so I was like, well, I'm gonna say I'm a foodologist. I know a lot about food. I know about what's good for you, what's healthy. When I have specific questions where I need advice from a true food professional, I have a group of RDs that I turn to, and you know, other times it's just me, the foodologist. So where do you weigh in on fad diets, juice cleanses? You know, superfoods. Uh, there's like that. a time and place for those. And I can look at people and situations on a case by case and say, you know what, if you start if you want to kick start with a cleanse or if you want to go on a fad diet for a little while, that's fine. But as a long term solution, I just say, no, no, no. They just don't work because they don't teach you anything. In order to succeed long term, you have to change your lifestyle. I feel like some of those jump start plans and cleanses are okay, but long term, you know, the the philosophy the Hungry Girl way is probably more the way to go.